Hi, this is Don Debelak. You've reached the fifth video in our series, Pumping Up Sales, called Determine Your Product Strategy. This is a strategy that's often overlooked by inventors, and they don't really know how to focus their product to get the best type of sales success. Now, I showed this slide a little earlier in neither the very uh, uh, previous video or the one before that where I talked about athletic shoes. And I'm bringing this up again because it kind of shows what a product strategy is. So what we're talking about, for instance, in Nike period, uh, people worried about winning and status. So people who wanted to go on the court, tennis court, basketball court, wanted to show their athletic or wanted to uh, feel athletic when they're walking around, they bought Nike shoes. So the product strategy for Nike was to, if, if you recall when this uh, particular study was done, had a lot of Michael Jordan, a lot of star athletes, a lot of winning people, and it really was about Nikes and athletics, and Nikes and, and really being athletic wear that you could go out and do a lot with. Reebok, in contrast, uh, they found that the people who are buying their uh, product were uh, interested in cons comfort and stability. So they went out and that was their product strategy, comfort and stability. It was a pe people walking, it was a people, sometimes older people, but they were, um, or they were going to school, going to buses, or um, they weren't really interested in how they looked, but just wanted comfort. And again, LA gear, I don't know, a lot of um, the gangs at the time this was done would give kids LA gear tennis shoes because that was sort of like wow you are really something special and a lot of people it was a high-end product a high-end market and had a lot of high image with it and then there was the kids kids which was simplicity and family values so basically every one of these um, the people were buying this because the manufacturer had selected that as his product strategy and that's really the key here. This is what I mean by a product strategy. How you position your product in the market, who you are taking your product and trying to make your product appeal to, and how you're differentiating your product from others. Now, if you were the Reebok guy and you were bringing out a tennis shoe and you were saying, well, it's more comfortable um, than Nike's, and that was your sales pitch, well, um, you're not gonna go anywhere there, really, because uh, Nike was a powerhouse. But if you came out and said, like, we know that like 25% of the people really like comfort and stability in their tennis shoes. They're really not interested in playing tennis or basketball, but want a nice, comfortable shoe, uh, shoe to wear for casual wear. And therefore, Reebok is going to be the shoe that dominates this market sec segment for comfort and stability. Now, that's a product strategy. People are going to listen to that. Um, your, no product serves everybody, so you want to really make your product strategy, first of all, appeal to a big sec, uh, segment of the market, and second, you want um, your product, product strategy to deliver on that promise and actually promote that way and have that type of literature. This is the way you're going to make sales. Now, when you're making a product um, strategy, you want to focus on uh, two things, what will sell and what you are selling. So, um, you you have a product, let's just say the Reebok a tennis shoe. Now you, you're looking at the different customer groups because we were talking earlier in the uh, video series on how to target and segment customers, how to segment by them goals, how to segment them by their features, how to segment them by what they want, and how to look for the group that's underserved. Now, um, basically what you have then is... Uh, a group of people you feel are underserved and you're going to gear your product strategy towards them as long as they're a significant group and you're going to really uh, explain how your product works for them and really dominate that market segment. And for that target customer and that target market segment, you want to talk about how you're better than anyone else. So you're not going to talk about your Reebok tennis shoes being better than LA gear. You're not going to talk about your Reebok tennis shoes being better than Nike. You're going to talk about your Reebok tennis shoes being better for people who want comfort and uh, safety. That's, that's your core. So it's not overall that you're a better shoe. It's you're better for this target segment. And that's your competitive advantage. You really need this in a big way. Uh, marketing sales statements that impact. Um, 
you know, you've got to have those statements really connect to your competitive advantage and to your target uh, customer group and to your product strategy. They all go together. And then your price points are important. So if you have comfort and um, for your shoes for Reeboks, well, they're going to be priced probably slightly under uh, Nike and probably a little more under LA Gear. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're cutting their price, but they're looking at their uh, segment. Their segments uh, wants comfort. They want the reliability, but they don't want to necessarily be paying a lot for image. So you want to kind of learn how to price your product in for what your product strategy is. And you want your product strategy and your pricing to fit in with the other products that are in the market. So if you look at Reebok, they had a very fine strategy. They had a very fine focus group. They had a very fine product for the application that they were going for. And they actually uh, had a good fit with the other products. Uh, so this, is, uh, this study was from about seven or eight years ago. And at the time, Reebok had a very strong market share and they had a very good strategy. Now, one of the interesting things is, um, now I've been in sales a long time, and one of the things you know salesmen learn is when they go out in the field, it's how to customize their product for the customer they're talking to, even if, in fact, the product is the very same product that they are selling to everyone. So um, if a salesman goes and says, well, what are you looking for in a product? And you describe what you're looking for, um, then what you're the salesman's going to say to you, well, that's exactly what this product has been designed for. And then he'll take off on that and he'll show you why your product is perfect uh, for what you're looking for. Now, basically what uh, you're doing is sort of the same thing because you have a product and uh, you're looking for unmet needs and then you're going to tell you at the market that that's what your product is going to do for them and hopefully you'll take your product and make some adjustment and changes so it actually delivers on what you promise but again product strategy starts by finding an underserved folk uh, target group really massaging your product so it's perfectly for that group and targeting your message at the, that group so if you're Reebok, in this case you've got a good message it's not nike it's not la gear it's not keds and you can go out and sell that product, and you can really go out and dominate your particular market segment. Now, sometimes you've got to think about what are you selling. Um, so are you really selling a tennis shoe? You know, when you're looking at customers, your markets, your unmet needs are geared to how to position your product, but the, the, um, the fact is you, you're selling something for a customer desire and a customer need and a customer want. So Reebok was selling shoes for people who want a comfortable pair of shoes so they can walk around downtown all day. Hey, that's what you're selling, that comfortable shoes so you can wear them all day and, um, you know, not have any back pain, not have any leg pain. So here are just some other uh, things we could be selling. This is what you're selling. I gave put some other definite market strategies up. And this is uh, what the kind of thinking you need to do to your product. So when you're presenting it, it's not a tennis shoe. It's a product that's designed for a focus group. So only closed loop gravity fed casting system for small and mid-sized parts. Okay, so what we're talking about to the market, they recognize closed loop fed gravity fed systems are better, but they're only used for big companies. They're only used in real big production runs, and there's uh, inefficient smaller production runs. So they, they were forced to make get by, you know, with uh, pr production processes that didn't render the quality, the fit and finish, or the cost of the uh, the bigger production runs. So they're coming out and they're saying, clearer than their focus, small and mid-sized parts. They've got a system for small to mid-sized parts to give you the benefit of the gravity-fed casting systems market leader in closure cards. Now a closure card is something uh, you send to someone when you are breaking off a relationship. And um, so again, closure cards and you're the market leader, you're the number one company in that field. Uh, repair scratch CDs and DVDs. Here, here's a, this is what they're selling, a repair kit that, re, you know, and I, I think everybody knows you get a scratch CDD, it's ruined. Well, it's not ruined, it can easily be fixed because what's really ruined is just the coating on the CD. And, and if you do, you can just uh, 
put a solution on there that will repair that scratch and you're good to go. Uh, foul painting, better than wallpaper at one third the price. So foul painting is just a, a sponge that has a pattern on it so you can just put a foul painting where you have a design from your paintbrush. So again, all of these things are first of all talking about what they are, why they're better, and what the advantage is. Now the Java jacket, which was one of my favorite inventions because the guy came out and uh, these are the little uh, cardboard sleeves you slip over your coffee cup because your coffee pot, uh, cup is hot and it might burn your hands. Well, the Java jacket guy, he wasn't selling that product to end users and he knew it. He was selling it to the people who sold coffee. And what was important to them? It was half the cost of a second coffee cup. So basically people were taking two coffee cups because the coffee was too hot. And to the store owners, of course, that was an expense. And by saying that you could have a Java jacket, cut the cost of that second coffee cup in half, that was a big feature. And it's really what he was selling. He wasn't selling, um, you know, a cardboard that went over coffee so people didn't burn their happiness. He was selling half the cost. And that's what you've got to get. Not what uh, your product is, but what is it that the benefit is that the person's buying. In the case of the Java Jacket, wasn't they weren't buying uh, the little piece of cardboard. They weren't buying that they would work nicely to... Uh, keep customers you know from getting burned hands they were buying something that cost half the cost of a second cup of coffee and and our coffee cup and that's that's smart marketing that's what you really have to work your product so it's clear exactly what it is you're selling uh, make bows yourself the easy way again it's it's make the bows yourself i mean it's it's not a gadget it's not a thing with the three little gizmos here and there, and it's not something that folds your bow up. It's something that makes bows yourself uh, the easy way. So you don't have to go out and buy a bow all the time. You can just use your ribbon and make your own bow. bow, um, bow. All-wheel mountain bike for the toughest trail. All right, that's the key for the toughest trail, all-wheel. See, that, that, that's really good salesmanship. So all wheel, so that all of, of a sudden it's like a four-wheel car and he's picking up on that. For the toughest trail, this is a product designed to take the toughest trails up and down the worst mountains. And it's for the real extreme sports enthusiast that wants to uh, go up and down steep hills and uh, go crazy and go down a steep hill and can kill himself. But that's what they like to do. So that's the key. What are you selling? You are not selling your product. You're selling something that benefits the customer in some way. You've got to get that. You've, that's what your product strategy is all about, recognizing what you're selling and recognizing and tying that in then with what the customer, you know, your target focus group customer really wants. And once you do that, then you're going to be in a really great position with your product strategy to really sell a lot of products. If you don't have this, um, you're not going to be successful. I read an a article about uh, Febreze recently. So Febreze came out in the marketplace, and you know it's something you spray in your house, and it absorbs all the odor. Well, they went out uh, now. Now Procter and Gamble introduced this product, and they spent, I think, almost a year trying to figure out their product strategy. They would not take this product out into the market without a product strategy. So they went out and they, they started having uh, people who, uh, one, one woman was a, um, a DNR, you know, a Department of Natural Resource person. She came home a lot of times with heavy odors and she um, brought it, you started using Febreze. She was a test and the odors went away. And so, you know, Procter & Gamble said, boy, we've really got the product. So they went out there and um, started marketing like that. The product didn't sell at all. People weren't interested in knowing that their house, house smelled bad. If they had nine cats, they recognized, they didn't recognize the odor. Everyone would come over and they might pass out from the odor, but the owner did not recognize it. So Procter & Gamble went uh, over and over again and, and was getting nowhere. So finally what they did is they got a group of about 20 women. They each gave them Febreze, and then they would watch... Um, 
you know, and then they waited a couple months to see what the women said. And uh, like four of the women came back and they just love Febreze. And the others, they didn't understand, they just didn't have a need to use it. And they didn't know where it was, uh, why it would be necessary. So anyways, then Procter & Gamble goes out to the homes and watches these people use Febreze. So what's happening is the people are, are cleaning their house, they're cleaning their living room, and when they get all done and they think it's all done, they spray a little Febreze in the room, sort of the final touch. And that's what Procter & Gamble sold Febreze, which is a, still a big selling product. Uh, this is the final touch when you finish cleaning that really makes the room extra fresh, extra good smelling, and really it's just what any good ho homemaker would want to do if they are cleaning their house. And that message, even though it didn't do anything, they didn't even sell the fact it absorbed odors anymore. They just sold how it was a nice, fresh, clean odor to make your house smell good after you uh, cleaned that room and the product sold. And so they spent a whole year, that's Procter & Gamble. And so you just can't afford to not really spend your time to understanding uh, what you're selling and what people are buying. How better are you than anyone else? Now again, this is product strategy. So forget about your features and all your little benefits. And forget about that. It doesn't matter. It's not what sells the product. You have to have them. Don't get me wrong. But we're talking about an overall strategy here that's going to pump your sales up. And uh, the features will come later. Now it is, how do you do what that customer wants better? Now take a look at that all-wheel mountain bike. Their customer was people who rode trails and mountains and hills, right? That was their focus. The all-wheel mountain bike, you know, how did it work? How did it feature? Well, all this kind of stuff. It doesn't matter. The all-wheels sold that concept. Rides best on muddy trails. Whoa, for their target customer who wants to go out and ride their bike all the time, that was really talking about how it's better. This is the best mountain bike. It's all-wheel. You can go on muddy trails. You can go out when the weather's not good. You can go out whenever you want, and you can go over a trail that's really lousy. You know, that's what you're selling. Now, Drinkwell, this is the cat fountain. So this was founded by an inventor who, whose cat, every time she turned on the faucet, the cat would run up to the faucet and would start drinking the water. And she drink the cat would drink the water, and it was quite irritating. Uh, inventor, she wouldn't. The cat wouldn't drink water out of the toilet bowl. Wouldn't drink water out of her little drinking, but only would drink out of the uh, faucet. Well, the the inventor goes around and finds all kinds of people have this problem. The cats like to drink that fresh water out of the faucet, and that's what she targeted. Cats won't with the drink well. Your cats won't drink out of the water because their water is always fresh. And what was drink well? Well, it was a, a little aquarium pump in a reservoir of water that just pumped the water up a fountain and then it bubbled down and was aerated. So it had that aeration that cats wanted. It was a very simple product, and the inventor didn't even nobody even cared that it was simple. No one cared that they could make this product with an aquarium pump for ten bucks when she was charging fifty. You know, that's what that's what they're talking about. So as far as the product, you know, for the CD repair, saves your favorite CD. You know, it's an emotional response. You have CDs. Everybody's had them where they get a little wrecked or a DVD. It saves it. Word lock was something that was sold in Staples, and the inventor... Uh, so instead of with a word lock, instead of using numbers, which you couldn't remember, it used words. And what did we? And why was the word lock? The guy was targeting that the inventor, that the uh, locks, the combination was easy to remember. You know. So what? You know. What is it that you're doing that's better than people? What is it that takes uh, that really resonates? Takedown was another product that uh, is still selling like crazy. What it does is. Um, especially when African Americans wear all these hair extensions where they put glue in their hair to hold these extensions in. Well, every now and then you still have to take those extensions off and uh, clean them and wash them. And um, this takedown product, it's the fastest way to take it down. It was a real problem. The people want a fast way to take down hair extensions and not be bothered with, um, you know, I, I really don't know how they were taking them out without takedown. But anyway, so... Again, 
it's not selling the product. It's not talking that it's got some formula that reduces glue and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. It's talking the fastest way. Hit the target customer for what they want to know and why your product does what they want. And that's really what a product strategy is all about so that you can sell your product a lot faster and a lot quicker than you can be talking about what features your product have and this and that and all these little teensy weensy advantages. This is why I keep emphasizing to you when you're making presentations to investors, when you're making uh, presentations to distribution channel members or other people you need to support, keep it short because if you keep it short, you have to focus on what's important. The minute you say, oh, I'll go 45 minutes, all you're going to do is go into the minutia that nobody really cares about. Now, of course, uh, your competitive advantage, now this is sometimes comes up, this is um, if, if people are pressing you and you, so usually you have your main statement and then you have one statement that really drives home why, you, why it is what you do best. So uh, for instance, in the drink well, four gallon per minute aeration pump. You know, that's what she said, just one feature. Now, does other pumps have four, four gallons or more? I don't know, probably. Four gallons per minute isn't that fast. It really doesn't mean that much. But the fact is she put something there to emphasize that there's something special in this product that really makes this product strategy work. And that's what you, uh, you really got to do. So word lock, only lock in the market with letters instead of numbers. So that's 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 your advantage. That's where you're selling it, and but you sell it under uh, first the product strategy, which is easy to use. The only all-wheel mountain bike on the market that was what the all-wheel that was their second line, which drives home the competitive advantage. Um, in the takedown, so we had takes it down easier. Special glue dissolver, right? Well. It could be all hocus pocus, I don't know, but the fact of the matter is you're reinforcing the fact why you're the better product in the market, and that's what you have to do. So um, now we've kind of come with the product strategy. We know how to sell what we're selling, not what our product features are, but what the customers want. We've come up and, and gone over and kind of gotten a framework of really what our positioning strategies and our marketing plan is. And of course, if you can tie, tie this into a, a slogan or a tagline, that's fabulous. So uh, like 7-Up, the Uncola, short and sweet, built for tough. You know, these are the kind of slogans uh, that really resonate with people short. Now, Quaker Oats warms your heart and soul. It's a little bit too long, but it's still okay. Uh, but uh, I like them much shorter. Taglines. Now, these are a little bit longer. So a tagline is BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper, which is pretty good. Clairol, does she or doesn't she? Again, these are the kind of slogans um, that we like. Um, Target has a very good slogan, expect more, pay less. Uh, and these are the kind, you want them to be short, you want them to hit what the person wants. And like Target's was such a beautiful tagline because expect more, in other words, they're better than Walmart. Better, better products, but pay less. Uh, expect more, pay less. So you're going to get a better, more value-added product for a lower price. They really aren't promising lower than Walmart, but they are promising a low price. And I think it's a great... And does she or doesn't she for Clara? I, I kind of like that too. But your 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 slogans, you really need them to be good. And I'm telling you, it's not easy to come up with a good slogan. Brainstorm with your friends and family and try to come up with something short and sweet that really accentuates, um, you know, your product. Now, I find that most inventors I talk to, they never even look at the product strategy. They don't even think about it. They think the product features are so great and they'll differentiate themselves. And so they're really going out into the marketplace uh, with the minutiae, as I call it, instead of the big, the big thrust, the big forward-thinking statement that really differentiates them in the marketplace. So they're really bad at slogans and they're really bad at taglines because they haven't even figured out what they're really selling. 
I really think it's important that you take some time, work through this, and, and just remember the Procter & Gamble. Um, the story about Forbes, they took a year before they felt they had actually the right market and product strategy and positioning strategy for their product. And they they never took it out till they had it done, even though they had a tremendous investment in the product. You know, you know the, the Procter & Gamble story also uh, reminds me that... Um, you're, you're better off than Procter & Gamble in one way. That Procter & Gamble takes the product out to the whole market. They can't afford to be wrong. You can, however, uh, take it out to one distribution channel or one market. You know, you're an inventor. You don't, you're not really broadcasting it all over. And if the strategy or you've come up with doesn't work, you can readjust and change. But it's way better if you can really figure this out to start with. Now you have price points are important, and the price points are important for end users and um, everybody else. Now, so you you have a perceived value. Now, when the Apple phone came came out, they charged what seemed like an outrageous price, seven hundred dollars. Now Apple isn't afraid to price their products on a value added basis. This was way more, well, they, they had the Blackberries out, but the Blackberries weren't quite expensive, and they were more geared towards people. So Apple did have that Blackberry price point, but they just said this is what it cost, and Apple can get away with that. You as an inventor, however, are not going to be the big dominant player that Apple is. You're going to have to fit into a market structure that exists, and so you have to have a price for... Uh, distributors and end users that fits into their perceived value of what your product should be costing. In other words, if, if you go out with a tablet phone and you're not Galaxy or Samsung or Apple, people expect, you know, to somebody who's coming in with a smaller line to be either two, two or three hundred dollars higher with way more features and way better features and way more performance or if their performance is just slightly better or not quite, they expect it to be probably 15, 10 to 15% lower in price. You don't want to be too low. I mean, um, you just want to be low enough that you fall into the perceived value from the, cus uh, from the customer and the distributors. And as far as distributors go, they not only look at price, but they're also looking at terms, the volumes you require, the promotion that you put up, um, you know, all of these different things avenues to add to their bottom line. So what you look like, uh, you want to be like equal value to other products in your uh, product price category. Uh, and, and so like if you're coming out of like remote control planes, now there's a big variation in products. And if you have a product with a lot more variation and you're the premium products, there's nothing wrong with charging 20 to 5 to maybe 40% more depending on what you're offering. But um, you 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 still can't go too wacky, and I mean, uh, the, and you can't like go maybe double the price. Whereas Apple maybe could go double the price because they have a big name that you don't have. But be careful on your price point. Test your points points with your uh, network, and really look at the marketplace. Going back to the Reebok uh, pricing. Now Reebok went for comfort. And they went for price pe uh, points for people who just want to be comfortable walking around. They weren't selling a shoe for people who want to go out and play tennis or basketball or dunk the ball. So their products, uh, you know, they, they aren't going to be able to charge as much as Nike. You know, the Nike is like a really high performance. It's, it's really a performance product. They were, uh, Reebok was a comfort product. And so Reebok was priced about, I think at the time, I, I did that study. It was they were about fifteen percent lower um, than Nike. That's a very people could accept that price. It was um, you know you think well like they might be not quite as close to Nike in price, but they didn't want to be kids. They didn't want to be family values. They didn't want to be the cheap shoe. They wanted to be a comfort shoe with good value but good image too. And so your price points really become important in establishing the marketing message you're trying to get a across. And that's why the product strategy is so important. Um, and, and another thing is really where your distribution outlet. If you're going to sell in kitchen stores, uh, you know, where they have a lot of uh, service, you're going to sell your product at a higher price. 
I mean, and your products, people expect those products to have higher price and higher quality than something you'll get, you know, at Target or Walmart. So um, look at your price points. They can kill you, but don't be, don't be uh, thinking low price, low price, low price, because that's, that's a way to sell your product short and not getting the value for it that you really want. Um, and then you really have to look at your product along with others in the uh, in the marketplace, how you fit in, how your pricing fits in, uh, how your marketing strategy fits in, how you're promoting your product strategy versus complementary products. And you want to kind of, this is one reason I like you to go to the trade shows and really look at all the other inventor products of con complementary products. Because a lot of times you can pick out all of the different product strategy those companies are using and pick one works that works for your product. And then maybe you can do coordination with those kind of companies who are really using a similar product strategy for their product. So maybe it's the upgrade, you know, the, you're, you're the gourmet cook. Maybe you're the camping cook. Maybe you're the uh, uh, the fast cook for people who work all the time. You know, get those other products that are really uh, using the same product strategy in you. And there, first of all, going to the you know you can see all the different ones you have to choose from. But second, these are the kind of companies you might be able to to partner with. Um, but you're going to look at your complementary products. You're going to look at it. And you want to be looking at, okay, are they using metal? Are they using plastic? What kind of products are they using? What kind of uh, materials of construction? You have to fit into that. You want to look at their color schemes. Maybe what you have for iron products, they're all, you know, shiny stainless steel and low end products are just um, cast iron or they're, you know, a different type of material and all that they all fit together. You'll also see for your um, product strategies and the complementary products a certain amount of mechanical complexity. Um, and, and again, you want to fit in with the other products where uh, the complementary products people are buying to create a solution with similar color, design elements, uh, complexity, so that you, you're, you're really a good fit to the product line. That's really what people are looking for in the distribution channel. And usually end users are looking for that kind of consistency too. And it's really up to you to provide that. And you're also going to be looking at the sophisticated uh, of the user um, when you have your product strategy. Take a look at the other products, you know, complementary products, the same customer is buying and the same companies are sell, say, uh, taking the same route for a product strategy that they are and see what they're doing. See how sophisticated their marketing is. See how sophisticated they're doing things or unsophisticated or how they're going just for, you know, the every man look and see. Because, again, you need to fit in with the other people who are using a similar product strategy with complementary products and um, you know high style functionality performance comfort whatever the strategy is that other companies use that you tie into fit in with those products so that the consumer can see they're buying a complete solution so now you're all done and I know that we've gone on quite a bit for this video for not so many slides but I think this is really important it's like the extra mile that you can do that really changes you from being non-successful to su successful. So make a list then when you're all done. What are you selling? And I don't mean what your features are, and I don't mean what your product is. How are you better than anyone else? How are you better for your focused target customer? How do you get your product out to that target customer so that they see that you're better and you're giving them what they want? What is your competitive advantage? going to be with that target customer? How do you go about uh, establishing that with slogans and taglines? How do you brand your product with slogans and taglines so people understand what who you're targeting, who your focus group, and what your advantage is? Also, be very careful on listing all your price points. Don't be too cavalier here. Really check with your network contacts, check with people in the marketplace that you know, and make sure that your price points really work um, and not only work as far as being a good fit for the complexity of your product, but being a good fit for what your product strategy is and how you're trying to position your product 
so that customers will buy it. And finally, uh, I like to see you list some of the complementary products that you'll be going with that use a product strategy somewhat similar to what yours in, and what kind of product, uh, uh, color schemes they use, what kind of designs they have, how complex they are, and how they fit in with the other products in the market, and how really are they communicating their their uh, particular product strategy and make sure you kind of fit in with that so when people buy a complete solution they can kind of see they're buying a series of products that really fit together well.